Good evening. You're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. Firstly, headlines. Public Authority for Investment Promotion and Export Development announces its annual plan and stress that Omani non oil exports in October 2014 reached 3.3 billion Omani rials. Al Khalia All the Cell program qualifies and trains entrepreneurs and spreads the culture of independent work. And three people are killed in a rocket strike in Kramatorsk town in Ukraine. And Obama says diplomacy and sanctions remain his preferred tools to resolve the crisis. Well, those were the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Dr. Hassan Rouhani of Iran on his country's National Day. His Majesty the Sultan received a cable of thanks from His Excellency President Beji Qaid Asepsi of Tunisia in reply to His Majesty's cable of condolences on the death of his brother. <music> Enhancing the competitive center of this heartland and attract Gulf and international investments topped the goals of the annual plan of Public Authority for Investment Promotion and Export Development, ITHRA, for the current year. The authority, during a press conference, discussed topics related to investment opportunities, the role of private sector in this field, as well as the importance of workshops and activities related to national competitiveness, in addition to organizing exhibitions to promote Omani products inside and outside the Sultanate. The annual plan also aimed to focus on services provided to businessmen and investors. Talib bin Saif Al Mahmari, Director of Export Facilities Department in the Public Authority for Investment Promotion and Export Development, IFRA, announced that Omani non oil exports achieved an increase of 7.2% in October 2014, recording 3.3 billion Omani rials. He added that the Gulf Cooperation Council countries have more percentage which related to the Omani exports due to customs union facilities besides other surrounding countries in Asia, Europe and the United States, as well as Singapore because of free trade agreements. Shura Council Office discussed today a number of precautionary measures forwarded by its members to some government entities during its sixth periodical meeting of the year, namely from the project of Gulf Electricity Linkage forwarded to His Excellency, the Minister Responsible for Financial Affairs, and a fish market in the Wilayat of Matra forwarded to His Excellency, the Chairman of Muscat Municipality. It also reviewed a number of replies from the government bodies related to the job seekers' data the delay in constructing health center in Adriz in the Wilayat of Ebri and closing down some crushers working in the Wilayat of Sahar. Within his framework to enhance and develop the infrastructure, the Minister of Transport and Com Communications implemented a number of projects in the field of roads during 2014 that included various governorates of the Sultanate. During the current year, the government is working to implement 84 projects in the roads sector with more than 1,600 kilometers, costing 2.7 billion Omani rials. The projects include Batna Expressway as well as the first and second parts of Adam Thambrait dual carriageway. Qualifying and training entrepreneurs as well as spreading the culture of independent work top the goals of Al Khalia or the cell program implemented by Omani India Fertilizer Company Omifco. The program through its three cause, causes was successful to qualify a number of Omani youth who were able to establish their own projects while others joined the labor market. It aimed to support labor and innovation sectors in the Sultan through providing a number of training courses as well as to contribute in providing job opportunities in addition to enhance the skills and capabilities of the entrepreneurs. 
The third Omani industry exhibition is aiming to make the Omani industries their first choice of the consumer and to instill the culture of buying the Omani products. His Excellency Dr. Ali bin Masoud Asinaidi, Minister of Commerce and Industry, presided over the opening ceremony. The exhibition, which came within the activities of Omani Industry Day celebrations, included 44 companies, factories, small and medium enterprises, as well as a number of governmental authorities, such as Minister of Commerce and Industry, Minister of Manpower, and Al Rafid Fund. The exhibition also contained a group of Omani Industries which are producing items such as doors, plastic materials, electrical devices, perfumes, security and safety tools. The Ministry of Sports Affairs honored the excellent youth in sports activities in 2014 to encourage them to continue the Sultan's achievements. The honoring ceremony covered all clubs, committees and sports teams which won advanced places in the international competitions. His Excellency Sheikh Saad bin Mohammed Al Saadi, Minister of Sports Affairs, presided over the ceremony. Various national sports teams won in 2014 more than 200 medals in different individual and group games, achieved by more than 320 female and male players. Uh, the most important medal was when the national handball team achieved the second place in Asian Beach Games in Thailand in 2014. Still to come on News Bulletin, a record setting run of snowstorms pounds the U.S. Northeast. Welcome back. On other news, in Ukraine, the government's controlled regional administration said a state, in a statement that three people were killed and 15 wounded in the rocket strike on the town of Kramatorsk today. A witness saw the body of a woman after the strike, which slammed into a residential area of multi-story building, adding that a child who was with the woman was wounded. President Petro Poroshenko said the strike on the town was one of two strikes the other hitting the headquarters of Kyiv's military operations in the east against pro-Russian separatists. U.S. President Barack Obama meets at the White House with German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who discussed the peace initiative with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Friday and has made clear she opposes providing lethal arms to the Ukrainian government. Merkel, Putin and the leaders of France and Ukraine are due to meet tomorrow for further peace talks. Obama signaled that he will wait for the results of high-stakes talks on Ukraine before deciding whether to arm the Kyiv government, saying diplomacy and sanctions remain his preferred tools to resolve the crisis. At a White House news conference uh, with visiting German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Obama father stated the following. Good morning, everybody. Please be seated. Uh, we continue to encourage a diplomatic resolution to this issue. Uh, and as diplomatic efforts continue this week, uh, we are in absolute agreement that the 21st century uh, cannot uh, stand idle. Uh, have us stand idle and, and simply allow the borders of Europe to be redrawn at the barrel of a gun. If, in fact, diplomacy fails, what I've asked my team to do is to look at all options. What other means can we put in place uh, to change Mr. Putin's calculus? Uh, and the possibility of lethal defensive weapons is one of those options that's being examined. But I have not made a decision about that yet. I've consulted with not just uh, Angela, but 
will be consulting with other allies about this issue. Uh, it's not based on the idea that Ukraine could defeat a Russian army that was determined. Uh, it is rather uh, to, to see whether or not there are additional things we can do to help Ukraine bolster its defenses in the face of separatist aggression. As the U.S. and Cuba take steps to normalize relations, Florida stands to gain from its proximity to the island. But even as many local businesses are eager to tap into Cuba's market, they face many hurdles. Here's a report. When John Fay heard that the U.S. was easing trade and travel rules to Cuba, he decided to take his planes to New Heights. He and his wife own a charter company in southwest Florida and are now looking to add Cuba to their destinations. It'll be satisfying if we get it done because, you know, if our pie is this big now, it might be that big. Because, what, it's the largest island in the Caribbean. There's 11 million people down there. Uh, beautiful beaches, weather. With only 90 miles between Cuba and Florida's coast, many here want to tap into a market that's been all but closed to Americans for over 50 years. While tourism to Cuba is still banned, those visiting for religious, education or family reasons are among 12 categories of travelers to have restrictions eased. The changes also open a door for U.S. companies to do business with the island's emerging private sector. Florida stands to benefit from many different sectors of the economy that are in need in Cuba. So for example, materials, building materials, uh, potentially construction, um, infrastructure, uh, agriculture. Others aren't celebrating just yet. Jay Brickman works in a company that ships food and farm products to the island, which were already partly exempted from trade sanctions. He says a lot has to be sorted out before trade with Cuba can increase. The key word is ease. It's, it's important to understand that the embargo is still in place. Consequently, I think in the short run, we will not see much impact. Little by little, as people understand how to work within the rules of both countries, we should see an increase in trade. Not everyone in Florida plans to do business with a communist island, though. Among the local Cuban-American community, such talks still stir up passions. I wouldn't do business with Cuba on principle because I think it's a country that has only demonstrated that it doesn't have respect for human rights and that it's not interested in moving towards democracy. After a first round of historic talks in Havana, the U.S. and Cuba admit they'll have to overcome deep rifts. But while the road to normalize ties will likely be a bumpy one, many U.S. businesses are warming up their engines ready for takeoff and trade. Forty years after Cyprus was divided by a bloody conflict, the island's Greek and Turkish communities are trying to overcome their differences and find an unusual common cause, halloumi cheese. More details in the following report. The Mediterranean island of Cyprus has spent hundreds of years perfecting the production of halloumi cheese. The goat and sheep's cheese has been popular with Cypriots since the Middle Ages. Now it's in demand around the world, generating 80 million euros a year for the island nation. But producers say they need protection from cheaper copies. What we're expecting is more protection on the name so that other countries will not copy it. And we have a kind of establishment, like in France you have Roquefort cheese, we will hopefully will have halloumi cheese. Greek Cypriot authorities have already asked the European Union for protected status. But in a country divided for over 40 years, that's raised concern on the Turkish side. Government inspectors can't currently enter the Turkish north to monitor halloumi producers, a requirement made by the EU. The Greek government, they don't have control at the north side. So the Greek government, the Greek officials, they don't cross the board to come here. And they will say, because we cannot go there, we cannot make the controls, so they cannot use the name, or they can politicize it. But Greek authorities say they won't exclude producers from the north of the island. It's going to be an, uh, 
exporting weapon for Cyprus and it will benefit all producers, Turkish, Greek and others who wish to produce it in Cyprus. So and it will be very, very beneficiary for our economy. Divided by decades of conflict, authorities hope the Greek and Turkish communities can work together to protect their prize exports. But after years of mistrust, it could take more than grilled cheese to unite these bitter foes. Very tasty, that halloumi cheese. We apologize for the sound record there. And finally, record-setting run of snowstorms that has pounded the U.S. northeast over the past two weeks has taken a heavy toll on Massachusetts, taxing supplies of salt to keep roads clear and leaving authorities running out of places to pile the snow. Boston's transit system was shut down due to the prolonged heavy snowfall, and the city's mayor canceled schools after officials said almost two meters of snow had fallen on the city so far this season making it the 10th snowiest winter on record. At least four buildings collapsed around Boston under the snow's weight. Winter storm warnings were in place from central New York State through northern uh, Connecticut, southern Vermont and New Hampshire and most of Massachusetts where municipalities had begun contracting dump trucks to carry the snow away. The snowy conditions contributed to more than 2,000 flight cancellations around the United States, with the, with the largest number reported in Boston and at New York's LaGuardia Airport. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the Assault of One Television. Before we enter tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Public Authority for Investment Promotion and Export Development announces its annual plan and stressed that Omani non-oil exports in October 2014 reached 3.3 billion Omani rials. Al-Khalia, or the sale program, qualifies and trains entrepreneurs and spreads the culture of independent work. And three people were killed in a rocket strike in the Ukraine town of Kramatorsk and Obama says diplomacy and sanctions remain his preferred tools to resolve the crisis. And with that, we come to the end of tonight's News Bulletin. From all of us here in the studios and the newsroom, thanks for your company. Good night.